Today's video is sponsored by a good friend of the channel, Bootleg Greedo. Aloro versus Arcades, Omnath, and Rem Carolus. Uh, two lander with some card draw, we will keep that one. We gain two life at the beginning of each upkeep, thanks to our commander, of course. And draw ourselves into a Bolas' Citadel. Go for a Tricycle Land. A Rampant Growth from Arcades. And we managed to get into a Mana Crypt. And not in a massive rush to get down the Ether Flux Reservoir, because it'll just eat a removal spell. Yeah, we're up against colours that can destroy artifacts really easily. So in that case, we'll just go for the Blind Obedience. And hopefully that will slow our opponents down with regards to Artifact Ramp at least. The first creature coming in tap thanks to the Blind Obedience, a Leafkin Druid. Another one from the Bent player, that is Axbane Guardian. <laughs> okay, well we're getting into mana, not lands apparently. Uh, yeah, we need to be making lands, it's turn 3 here, so let's go sign in blood, draw 2 cards. Cannot extort with the Blind Obedience unfortunately. Alright, had to get past a Solemn Simulacrum, which we can play this turn. Yeah, let's go City of Brass. Missing out on a lot of extort triggers here, but we'll go for the Mana Crypt. It's not every day that Esper gets to accelerate along like this. Mana Crypt takes us into Sol Ring, and then as long as we don't pay the extort, we have four exactly, including one floating from the Mana Crypt. So that will allow us into a Solemn Simulacrum. So we're looking pretty damn good here. We've got uh, two, four, six, eight mana available to us. If we want to get both of these down, that will obviously cost ten in total. Also relies on the fact that we're actually going to keep these rocks. But yeah, Bolus' Citadel and Aetherflux Reservoir are a bit of a combo together. If you get a couple of lands on top with the Bolus' Citadel, then that's going to stop you. But yeah, you do stand to gain a lot of life from the Aetherflux Reservoir with the Citadel. The Boros player's still not doing anything, they don't have any white mana even though they've cracked and evolving wilds this game. And there we see a Fertilid, which can be a rampant growth. Arcades coming down thanks to the mana from the Guardian. We continue to gain life. Okay, a Malakir Rebirth, we could keep Solemn in play, we could use it as some ramp actually, get this back into play off a of board wipe. Think I'd Rather just go for the Bolas' Citadel, try and get into something good here. Once again, losing out on the Extort here. Haven't played a land yet. There is a Test of Endurance. We're not going to uh, have 40 life. Because this thing can swing in at us, we can trade the Solemn Simulacrum with it. I suppose we could pay for the Extort here actually and try and go for the win. Yeah, if we pay for that, then we go to 43. Oh actually, I didn't account for the City of Brass. Ah, uh, yeah, I was thinking we could trade the Fertilib with the Solemn Simulacrum, take a hit for 3 from Arcades and still be at 40, but I didn't account for the City of Brass, so... Uh, might as well keep going. Could go for the Twilight Prophet here, which we might as well, seeing as how we're not going to win next turn anyway. <laughs> and there is a Consecrated Sphinx. So it looks like we're just going crazy here. Got a land on top in the Underground Sea. Yeah, so... Uh, Potentially would have been able to hold up counter magic if I'd not tapped the City of Brass. This player scooping. Uh, there could be a board wipe, so... Yeah, maybe a bit too early on the scoop, and there is a Plains on top, so... Holding up the Malakir Rebirth for the Consecrated Sphinx, at least. And let's attack in towards the Bant player. Okay, and then the Red player scoops, so you're going to get another game after this, I imagine. Consecrated Sphinx still triggers, we get a Demonic Tutor, another land on top. And now it's a Rhystic Study, have a Phyrexian Reclamation on top. If we get into a Counter Spell on top, then we can play it. Well, the Bant player, playing it out, a Vine Trellis. Drawing a card with the Arcades, thanks to the Defender coming in play, so Consecrated Sphinx going to trigger again. Revealing a Talisman on top. Then a Glacial Wall, gonna come in tapped, thanks to the uh, Blind Obedience. But once again, drawing a card draws us two. We do get into a counter spell in Mana Drain, not on top of our library, so we can't cast it for free. And it's a Crested Sun Mare on top. We'll try and win with the Aether Flux Reservoir on our next turn. Going to draw with the Twilight Prophet because we do have the City's Blessing. Not getting bolted by the Mana Crypt because we're just that lucky this game, apparently. And there is an Angel of Destiny. Don't have any haste at the moment. So drawing into that, it's a Soul Warden for even more life gain. 
Not going to play a land from our hand. We'll go for the Aether Flux Reservoir before we do anything else, though. And Extort isn't anywhere near as good now that we've lost two opponents. So, as soon as our opponent sees that, deciding to scoop, we'll see if the client decides to show us the cards. Yep, I mean, even if we weren't going to go infinite there, the Veto, along with us gaining a bunch of life from things like Soul Warden, and, uh, yeah, drawing even more cards from the card draw with Drog Skull Reaver. Yeah, I mean, that was just a perfect storm for us, wasn't it? Getting into the two pieces of Fast Mana really, really helped us there, as well as having both Bolas' Citadel and Aether Flux Reservoir. Really, really lucky draws. We'll try another one. Aloro versus partners Kedis and Tana, Grenzo and Muldrotha. Uh, we can take our time ramping with a Burnished Heart. And that'll take us on to a turn 5 Fumigate, so yeah, keep that one. And a Johnny's Pride Mate for us to cast on turn 2. Turn 1 Sol Ring serves us right for the last game into Mind Crank, so obviously have a Mind Crank combo in here. Turn 1 Skull Clamp from Grenzo, risky to just throw that out there. Suggests that this might be a Goblin Tribal deck though. Alright, an Arcane Signet as well, so... Do we just ramp now while we've got the chance? Don't think it necessarily benefits us to have Arcane Signet out when we play the Burnished Heart next turn. Allows us to hold up Source to Plowshares, but I don't think that really matters. So we'll go for the Pride Mate and start buffing that. Down to three cards in hand. Muldrotha, that is a Dust Mantle Guild Mage. And a Demir Signet. Dust Mantle Guild Mage being another combo piece. Grenzo on turn two. And a Kordama's Reach, so I'm not sure if they've spotted the combo over here. Maybe they just don't have removal. Turns out playing the Arcane Signet to hold up Source to Plowshares this early was going to be relevant, by the way. So we gain two life, and that triggers the Ajani's Pride Mage. And that is a Painful Truths for us, so making some decent draws. Uh, might as well ramp then, unfortunately, take a turn off the Burnished Heart. And then swinging towards Muldrotha, I doubt they're going to block here. And... Yeah, they might have counter magic over here, so it's probably safe to just get rid of the uh, combo piece now. A charcoal diamond. Into a Zulaport cutthroat, down to two cards in hand. A Glinthorn Buccaneer from the red player. Grenzo attacking us for some commander damage. Glinthorn Buccaneer in Atmel Drotha. So Minecrank going to trigger and mill us some. They are goading our pride mate as well. So, uh, getting rid of a Cyclonic Rift and a Phyrexian Reclamation, unfortunately. Some really good mills there. Tana the Blood Sower into play. And our Pride Mate going up to a 4-4, thanks to the trigger from Aloro. So, that is an Angel of Destiny for us. We don't have 55 life plus, so... Yeah, it's just the Burnished Heart here. And then we have to attack with the Pride Mate, so... We'll go in towards Muldrotha again. Deciding to block with the Zulaport Cutthroat, so we all lose life and mill. Losing a Cabal Coffers, which isn't going to be too useful to us anyway. A Mountain here and an Expedite here. So Comrade the Grim. Lotus Petal from the Red Player. Chandra Torch of Defiance from the Red Player, keeping hold of the Lotus Petal. Should be minusing down on the Sir Comrade, I would think. I mean, as soon as Muldrotha gets into Green Manor, they're at threat of getting it back out again. But yeah, doing the right thing there, forcing them to go for the Sir after the Muldrotha. Glinthorn Buccaneer into the right. And Grenzo in at Muldrotha. So, not worthy that they're leaving their Chandra wide open. The Tana does have to deal combat damage to a player, not a Planeswalker. So, maybe deciding that we're not going to go after the Chandra. Grenzo exiling the top cards of Muldrotha's library. Grenzo uh, also goading the Tana. And getting rid of a Crater Hoof Behemoth from the Muldrotha player. And then there was some mill there thanks to losing life. So uh, that is a Phyrexian Altar and a Sword of Hearth and Home. Rogue's Passage into play. Still have a wide open player in the Sultai player. Kedis Emberclaw coming into play before Tana is forced to swing him. And obviously Tana, trying to guarantee a hit, swings in at Muldrotha. So it's only combat damage that Tana cares about, but Kedis going to deal a further 2 damage to each of us, both the Grenzo player and myself, which does trigger the Mind Crank. So we each get milled for 2. Just a couple of mountains over here. And that is a Swiftfoot Boots as well as a land for us. 
Couple of saprolings being made thanks to the combat damage. Lose life to the marsh flats, so a mine crank will mill us again. And we lose a veto this time. Casting an infernal plunge, adding triple red. Obviously sacrificing a sap to do that. And there is a Thunderfoot Bailoth, so uh, yeah, they are going to be making a lot of saprolings here. Three, three saprolings with trample. And that'll be four of them upon Tana hitting. Okay, Reliquary Tower, not bad. Uh, I think we just go Painful Truths here. And pray that we get into a land. Obviously putting all three colours into the Painful Truths because it's pay three, lose three, draw three then. We mill that many thanks to the Minecrank again. Losing Solemn Simulacrum, a land, and a Sol Ring. So we'll play the Underground Sea that we just drew into, and we're holding up mana for the Burnished Heart. I think we need to uh, open ourselves up to the Tarna, unfortunately, and carry on hammering away at Muldrotha, because I don't want anyone going easy on them. We'll get rid of this Chandra while we've got the chance. Traumatize going on to us. I was actually thinking of putting an Echo of Eons or a Time Twister in this tech and didn't do it, so... Yeah, unfortunately, going to lose half of our library here. So, losing both the Test of Endurance and the Felidar Sovereign, unfortunately. Luckily, we still have this to knock out a player, but I don't think there's really any other I-Win cards. Didn't bother putting the uh, Sanguine Bond and Exquisite Blood in the deck, because it's... If you see one, then you're going to get targeted for obvious reasons, so you need to have both of them in hand and have 10 mana held up and play both of them at the same time, and... Yeah, I just uh, was struggling on cuts and decided to cut those two. Oh, actually, I only just noticed we've lost the Bolus' Citadel as well. And Ad Nauseam. Ugh, might struggle to keep our hand full in this one. Mox Amber from the red player. Attacking in, Grenzo goes to the left. Glint Hornbook and Nia goes in at the Muldrotha as well. Not worthy that there's still no green mana from Muldrotha. Uh, exiling the top card of his library twice. So that is getting rid of some green mana in Overgrown Tomb, Watery Grave as well. And then the Tana player deciding to scoop. They were actually looking really good, so yeah, not sure what the script is there, but that's funny. If they had a really bad hand and that's why they scoop, then that's why you don't, because someone could always go for a Wheel of Fortune. Uh, yeah, pretty risky giving Muldrotha more cards though. Unfortunately don't have the white mana held up for the Path to Exile, but we might as well crank the Burnished Heart here. Don't want to draw into too many planes. We will mill a card with the Mine Crank. And that is one less basic for us to go for. Maybe should have done it before the Traumatize, actually. So it's an island and a swamp for us. We have two basic planes left in the deck. And Glinthorn Buccaneer dealt a damage to us. We uh, discarded or milled an Urborg there. Only 26 cards left in the library. Did manage to draw into our Aether Flux Reservoir and a Sun Titan, which could be relevant. Got a Mana Drain, actually not the worst hand. Shadow Spear for the red player, they've cracked the Lotus Petal. And also we see a Krenko, Tin Street Kingpin. Okay, we've got Sarah Ascendant in the bin, which we could go for, it will be active. Uh, probably best not to go for Aristic Study. Oh, actually, we have Swift Up Boots, don't we? So, uh, yeah, we could put that on the Sun Titan and grab back the... Uh, Sarah Ascendant as well. Okay, so a Malakir Rebirth to keep the uh, Sun Titan in play. We'll drop an Ancient Tomb. Lost two life to the Ancient Tomb, so being milled again. Uh, this time it is a Voice of the Blessed, which is another good Sun Titan target. So down comes Sun Titan. Get out the Swiftfoot Boots. We've also got Lightning Greaves in the bin. Not sure if I'm going to want the Hexproof over the Shroud, so just grabbing that. Goes on to the Sun Titan. And then we'll swing both of them in at the Muldrotha player, taking their life total down to 12. Sun Titan going to trigger, of course, which is why we went for the haste on there. And like I said, bringing back the Serret Ascendant, which is a 6-6 flyer with lifelink. And here we can just hold up the Malakir Rebirth and the Mana Drain. Not worthy that a Grismold has hit the bin at some point for Muldrotha as well. See if they managed to get into a green source. Be pretty unlucky if they didn't. Instead playing a Temple of the False God, it's not even online, I don't think. Yeah, five lands you need for that. Casting a Dark Ritual for Triple Black. Suggests that they're going for a really big spell, so it could be a very good mana drain for us, this. Yep, that is a Profane Transfusion. Exchanging life totals with us, we'll say no to that. 
So that is going to be 9 extra mana for us next turn, which is really good with an Aetherflux Reservoir. The red player going straight through to combat. Krenko in at the wide open Muldrotha. All three cards going in at Muldrotha. Krenko going to trigger, plus counter, and some goblin tokens. Three Grenzo triggers on the stack, exiling the top card. Uh, three times they are doing that. We see another green source in a forest. And then it is Pitiless Plunderer, which might be good with their goblin tokens, and an illness in the ranks. So deciding to play the Pitiless Plunderer. Not worthy that their skull clamp is online now. So they'll make a treasure token, as well as draw a couple of cards. So the skull clamp is effectively free here. Instead, with six cards in hand going after the Shadow Spear onto Krenko, it might have been worth doing that next turn instead and drawing the cards while you've got the chance. Happy with the six in hand apparently. Ah, and they had a mountain to play anyway. So they do go for a Skull Clamp. And doing it once again with the treasure token that the pirate made. So up to nine cards in hand, they can equip the Skull Clamp on something if they're worried about a board wipe. Instead deciding to hold up that mana, so that might be telling of something they might have in hand. Wouldn't have thought a lightning bolt would matter. Maybe just stockpiling their treasures. Discarding two cards to hand size, so it is one damage apiece. And I will mill a Blind Obedience. And I mill a Drog Skull Reaver as well. They discarded two basics, by the way. Okay, some more counter magic backup in Arcane Denial. We are going to get our nine mana, was it? Yeah, nine mana, so Ether Flux Reservoir. Not always easy to find the time to play that, but might as well if it's free. Might as well play a Night's Whisper now as well, while well, it's only one mana. Gain one life for each spell cast this turn. So we go up to 41, that buffs the Ajani's Pride Mate. We go down to 18 cards in hand, or in the library even. Okay, there's an Esper Sentinel as well. We lost two life to the Night's Whisper, so we're going to mill two again. Uh, Alright, there is a Soul's Attendant. Uh, yeah, I think Voice of the Blessed could be good. I think I want the Heliod, to be honest. Maybe Suture Priest would be useful against the Krenko. Anyway, we've probably got it here anyway. We lose out on that four mana, but it doesn't matter. We'll go through to attacks. Going to win with the Aether Flux Reservoir. So we swing in Serra Ascendant in at the red player. Ajani can go in and finish this player off. Uh, might as well swing Sun Titan in there as well in case they have Snuff Out or something. That triggers the Sun Titan. Uh, we'll actually grab back the Phyrexian Reclamation here. Because then we can pull any creatures we want out of the bin. That knocks out Muldrotha who unfortunately was stuck on mana. And then we go up to 45 so just play a Scrubland. And then it is an Esper Sentinel which sends us up to 48. Just throw the Malakia Rebirth on anything. It can go on the Sun Titan. And that takes us to 52. So even if our opponent does have a Lightning Bolt here, we'd go down to two life to the Aether Flux Reservoir, but then we'd be able to counter with the Arcane Denial and gain a whole bunch of life back. And then after that, we can get something back in with the Phyrexian Reclamation, maybe cast a couple of creatures, some cheap ones. And uh, yeah, we'd gain a whole bunch more life to hopefully take us out of range of anything they could do to us here. Suppose they could have a burn spell and deflecting swap, but doesn't look as though that's the case. Okay, it seems as though our opponents just decided to go AFK here, so we'll assume we've got the victory. Hopefully you all enjoyed this visit to Aloro, Ageless Ascetic, one of the commanders that I started with on Magic Online. And haven't played it on the channel very much, I don't think. Anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed it, like I said. Be sure to consider donating on Patreon like a few of you do already. That really, really helps with the production of the content on the channel. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.